So uh, were you compare what were you looking at in that study? What was uh, Well the study in long term meditators is something that's it's near and dear to my heart because I'm I'm a long term meditator now. Um, What's what, what define a long term meditator? Well, these these are people uh, by and large that have a daily meditation practice um, for uh, very often decades, and have done a number of uh, prolonged silent meditation retreats. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So these are people who spend a lot of time. Um, the vipassana or something is that what it's called. Uh, Something a lot of it is m mindfulness. We, we, we have over-representation from Buddhist traditions, and Vipassana okay. would be one of those uh, traditions. Uh, and so during that study, uh, people come into our session room. We have them do a series of meditations throughout the day, and uh, when, they, when they get uh, psilocybin. So we're very interested in how the phenomenology of those experiences change. We're comparing it to placebo. We're looking at pre and post uh, neuroimaging to see, looking for brain changes. And preliminarily, we're seeing day after changes, which is exciting and gets to this whole issue of neuroplasticity. And, uh, and we also have a condition in which we actually administer psilocybin to people in the scanner. So we're looking at meditation when people are on, in this case, a pretty low like dose real time. Okay. Of, of psilocybin. Yeah. So, and our interest there in meditation is that, um, you know, we think of meditation as kind of the tried and true path for exploration of the nature of mind. I mean, that's really what it is, is that it's this methodology that's been developed over thousands of years to turn the attention inward and watch one's own mental processes and become familiar with the way mind works, how it's constructed, and then, and then through that process, very often um, people uh, I hesitate to say gain control, but the, in, in effect, they can change the repertoire with which the, the, the brain is uh, activated. They can watch thoughts come up. They can release thoughts in a way that someone who's unpracticed with meditation is much less likely to be able to do so. So it's an investigation of the nature of mind. And similarly, I've come to think of psilocybin as also a, a convergent methodology for investigation of the nature of mind. It's the meditation on steroids, if, if you will, because there's such a abrupt shift of the nature of consciousness uh, that, uh, that it, it wakes people up to the extent to which kind of normative, their normative uh, cognitive processes or the, the normative way they hold reality is just one way of holding reality. Um, and so there can be something shockingly interesting uh, about that. However, psilocybin is not a substitution for meditation because it doesn't lead to any stability of, uh, of uh, the awareness state. So we would say that meditation is kind of the tried and true way of stabilizing the nature of awareness and coming to understand um, mind and psilocybin might be the crash course in that. Mm -hmm.